Okay. It is a great pleasure for the economic team, whose uh, deputy team leader I am, to continue our excellent cooperation with the German Eastern Business Association in uh, co hosting <laughs> this event together. The German ECME team is an economic policy advisory project financed by the German Federal Ministry of, for Economic Affairs and Energy. We have been active in Ukraine for many years and in other countries in the Eastern Partnership region in Central Asia and in the Western Balkans. Maybe a few words of background um, on our new product, the IT Sector Monitor Ukraine, whose first edition my colleague David Shah will launch in a few minutes. Um, the David Shahabud. Uh, economic policy advice on a very wide range of topics. This includes traditional topics like macroeconomic and financial issues, the energy sector, private sector development, investment attraction, topics on which we have worked extensively in the past. Still, the economy is changing, new sectors and topics are appearing. And a prime example here is the IT sector and the topic of digitalization more generally. Um, as this gains more prominence in Ukraine and the region, and David uh, will soon uh, substantiate this claim with some hard numbers. Our consultancy work is increasingly geared towards these new and exciting topics. One of our benchmark products to thoroughly analyze and sector from an economic point of view and to track its development is a so-called sector monitor. In today's case, the IT sector monitor. Similar well-established products exist in the banking sector or the energy sector in several of our countries of operation. Today, as I said, we will present and discuss the first edition of the IT Sector Monitor, which we also plan to update in regular intervals in the future. I'm very much looking forward to an interesting presentation and an active panel discussion. Feedback from business and the industry is very important for our work and is always highly appreciated. Thank you again um, very much for participating and over to um, Stefan um, for his welcome address. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Robert Kirchner, um, and welcome to everybody uh, here in the session today. My name is Stefan Kegelbein from the German Eastern Business Association. We are a Berlin-based Berlin, Berlin business association working with 29 countries in uh, Central Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe, and Central Asia. Uh, and my scope of countries are the countries of the Eastern Partnership, means uh, countries including Ukraine. Um, we have about almost 400 German companies as members, which are almost uh, everybody is somehow invested in the countries we're working with or has some trade relations. And of course, digitalization and the IT sphere is um, one of the very dominant sectors in the cooperation with our partner countries. Therefore, we launched um, in the beginning of this year, uh, the German-Ukrainian digital partnership with several partners uh, some of them are here today uh, at the call as well. And the idea of this initiative is to uh, bring closer together German typical uh, industrial companies with uh, Ukrainian startups or at least innovative companies. Um, so therefore, we are very glad that we could be a partner of the presentation today, uh, uh, David and uh, Robert and, uh, and, and Gary. So uh, since this is really in, in line uh, with the idea we have this German-Ukrainian digital partnership. Um, that is for the time, for the moment, uh, to be from my side. Uh, and we are very happy um, if you would um, um, go on with this monitor, that it would be not only a single one uh, um, event, that is a thing we want to underline with our initiative, uh, not only having single events, but showing that there is a process and uh, that you have to follow and do not lose uh, the developments. I guess therefore this presentation today is very timely. And again, thank you very much that we had the chance to be a partner of this presentation. Thank you, Stefan. A very good morning from uh, my side as well. Um, just before I start, maybe one uh, little housekeeping note. It would be really great if you all could uh, put yourselves on mute while you're not speaking, just uh, to uh, avoid any interference whenever anyone else is, is speaking. That would be very nice. So thank you. Um, the IT sector monitor, uh, as Robert said, is a reaction to obviously uh, the changing nature of, of the economy of Ukraine, the changing nature of our work. Um, digitalization has basically um, is changing countries everywhere. 
And for Ukraine, we basically decided as a team that uh, for us two directions uh, will be most important with regard to policy work. On the one hand, this is sector reflects the work we are doing on the IT sector itself. Um, so uh, really where uh, digital business uh, is taking place, which is sort of classifiable as uh, yeah, the digital economy. Uh, at the same time, obviously, the digital economy could be understood uh, stood in, a, in a wider sense. And that's basically digitalization permeating everyone in the economy. And that's also a topic we're addressing with a different publication to which I would just draw attention before I'm uh, going into the IT sector itself. So where the programming and all that uh, IT retail and so on is taking place. This other publication, which is looking at the general uh, digitalization of the economy, um, uh, is basically a survey-based uh, publication where we are looking at the state of digitalization in companies throughout Ukraine. And I will possibly briefly refer to that in the end, or we could also uh, go to that in the Q&A afterwards. For this, I would first like to turn to slide number five, Gary. And um, due to time, I won't be able to present all of this. So I think I will go through the main issues. When we're looking at the IT sector, and the, the idea of the se uh, sector monitor is to present a very uh, comprehensive picture of that sector, of uh, what is its size, its economic implication, and what's, uh, what are some sort of uh, relevant issues pertaining to it. The, the obviously big first question to start with is uh, the size of the sector, how big is it actually? And that's one thing where we think we made an important contribution because very often statistical categories are still dating from another time and age. And uh, therefore in normal statistics, uh, the IT sector is usually put together with communications. You have IT services and communications, communications like telecoms and so on are very important and also very modern part of the economy, but they have very little to do in effect with the IT sector. So we decided to really work a bit harder, put together a new concept of the IT sector that doesn't include communication services, but does include what's normally not included, IT retail and repair, and the manufacturing of IT related goods. And um, Obviously, for Ukraine, as many of you will already presume, who are more familiar with the, uh, the sector, that is not too relevant. Ukraine is really heavily based on IT services, but still we are therefore able to have a much more comprehensive picture of what the actual size of the, the sector in Ukraine is. On the next slide, um, we can see now what, what's been the development. And that actually is important because the sector has grown much faster than the rest of the economy. It's still relatively small, but it has increased its share from 2% of the economy in 2015 to 3.1% by 2019. And the path is obviously rising and Corona, the da uh, data is not out yet. It takes a while because we need to compile it uh, from uh, smaller sources, which don't become uh, come available quite as quickly as the bigger ones. Uh, but uh, obviously Corona won't have decelerated that trend. I think that is for sure. So that's a really a sector that is, although still small, uh, relatively small, uh, growing very fast and uh, therefore a highly dynamic, important force already to be reckoned with in the economy. Comparing it internationally, we have to go back to the old definition, which includes the communication sectors. But even there, we can see that Ukraine's uh, ICT sector then is already bigger than that of Germany or Poland. It's smaller than that in Estonia, which is obviously a highly IT specialized uh, country. But um, uh, there we, we do get the, the idea that uh, IT in Ukraine is basically going to be an economic uh, specialization of the country. So a real strength of the country. And I think that is one thing we are finding throughout this uh, publication. Next. H, please. Thanks. Um, employment and wages are uh, in, a, uh, in a sector like IT obviously are crucial. It's a highly uh, labor-driven sector. And uh, it's very qualified labor that's required, especially for the cutting edge, for the, for the programming, for the consultancy parts and so on. And that we do see reflect in employment. And we take both the individual entrepreneurs, which are of course very important in, in Ukraine, and the regular employees together. Um, for those who are not familiar with uh, the sector in Ukraine, it has a very specific uh, kind of setup where very often people can workers de facto workers can um, can be registered as individual entrepreneurs falling under a simplified taxation scheme which is de facto a tax relief so therefore we have to calculate these individual entrepreneurs which actually make up the majority of workers in the sector and we do find that 
essentially the full employment. So regular employees and individual entrepreneurs, which are making up the lion's share, as I said, of programmers, are measuring up to 2.9% uh, of uh, total employment in the economy by 2019. So that's following uh, the share in the economy, and that obviously makes sense. Wages in Ukraine, um, that's, uh, that may be surprising to some of those who are, uh, who are uh, tuning in from Germany and who may not be familiar with this specific sector in Ukraine. Wages are quite detached from the rest of the uh, Ukrainian economy. Uh, the average wage in Ukraine is $737 a month, or was that in 2020? Uh, no, sorry, the national average wage, now I'm getting confused myself, I'm sorry, was $430 per month. In uh, Only for those for regular registered uh, IT employees was already $730, but to be honest, that's not the real wage of uh, most people who are working in that sector. Most people are individual entrepreneurs, they are therefore not counted in the, the statistics, so we have to look at survey-based data, and there we're getting something north of $2,000 a month. That's a totally different dimension for Ukraine. It means this sector is no longer uh, just a cheap outsourcing sector. I think those days are really past. It is a very comp internationally competitive sector that is not... Uh, um, th that is quite detached in a way from the productivity that we see in the rest of the Ukrainian economy, and this is uh, competing on a quite different scale. So it's, uh, these wages don't mean it's not quite that cheap anymore, but they also clearly do indicate what sort of performance is being uh, done by the sector. Next slide. Um, and this international dimension is exactly what we're seeing here. In international trade of Ukraine, this sector has become quite important already in services exports, obviously. So the services exports that the IT sector produces are now basically, that's essentially all the exports that the sector produces, and they measure up to 5% of total Ukrainian goods and services exports together. In, in 2020, that's a dimension roughly corresponding to 2% of GDP. That's those are macroeconomically relevant numbers already. We're, we're entering that ter uh, territory, and obviously we see that this number is about to rise uh, further. Obviously, the sector is also a huge net exporter. Imports are relatively low. Imports are more sort of on the hardware side, which is something that Ukraine is not uh, doing very much of. It's really the IT sector in Ukraine is a sector that is uh, geared at uh, programming and uh, digitalization services. Programming production of uh, uh, IT products, so uh, like software and so on, and uh, digitalization services. Uh, but the services uh, exports role is already very important and uh, should not be underestimated. I think uh, many people were not quite aware of how big this is already. When we're looking further, um, we will come more to the sector, uh, to the roles of the sort of individual activities in the sector in a moment, which I think are quite important. Just one, uh, because it's in the sequence of this publication, one uh, issue that's always important in Ukraine for policy debates is the tax uh, revenue uh, made by that sector. And that's for the reason that uh, it basically, due to this individual entrepreneurship, it enjoys de facto a sort of special regime which is about to be somewhat regularized, um, but it is obviously the subject of discussion because many workers are not paying income tax and social security contributions, but they are these uh, individual entrepreneurs, although they are de facto employees. Therefore, we always have the debate of, is the sector under tax? Does it enjoy a tax subsidy? And uh, we sort of compare tax shares here, um, and looked especially at the share in direct taxation of the sector. And what we found is that yes, the sector is somewhat undertaxed, but on the other hand, it is not as undertaxed. And basically the relation that we're putting up here is that the share of the sector in the economy is 3.1%, and the share of uh, the IT sector in direct tax revenues, because indirect taxes like VAT are obviously not being paid by a, a services sector, uh, an export sector, sorry. Um, and the share in uh, direct taxation is 2.4%. So there is an under taxation. There's obviously also the public sector, which is not uh, uh, not, not equally paying taxes, although p uh, personal income taxes are being paid by, uh, uh, by the public sector as well. So it's not entirely comparable, but still we do find that the under taxation is by far not as crass as many people would have expected that. Can we go on two slides from here, please? Um, 
So now we come to the, I think for most of the internationals uh, tuning in, I think uh, an important dimension that's sort of how is the sector developing? Where exactly uh, is it going? What's the dominant activity? What's Ukraine actually really great in, uh, in IT? And I think uh, what we see here is uh, on the horizontal si uh, side, we see sort of the size on the horizontal axis of the sub activities in the sector. On the vertical, we see sort of the development uh, to the top, they are growing faster. And I think what we're seeing here is clearly uh, a huge emphasis on IT services, computer programming by far the biggest activity, data processing, information publishing on a web service and on IT consulting are the next two that are both relatively big already and growing quite quickly. And I think that's sort of uh, the main activity, although I think pro programming is one that should be taken with a, with a grain of salt, because uh, I think the start of the Ukrainian IT sector was programming discrete sort of blocks of code, if I get that correctly, uh, doing individual coding projects uh, for foreign clients in the, in the, in the vast majority. And, uh, more and more companies are developing further from that to sort of developing complete products and also to offering digitalization services. So same as in many manufacturing uh, industries, you don't just sell sort of uh, uh, some piece of engineering, but you sell this sort of entire service of how to integrate this in your in, in your company's business model. And this has become an important activity. This IT uh, consulting uh, uh, digitalization services has been has become an important activity in Ukraine's portfolio. On the next slide, we sort of uh, 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 sorry one further. Um, we uh, do take a deeper look at uh, how um, these activities within within the service, the, try, the attempt of a deeper look are developing. And what we are seeing here is that uh, we, we sort of have in the graph on the lower left side, um, the number of companies or the uh, share of employment in outsourcing, outstaffing and product companies and startups. And I think the, the mo main story, although it's by far not the entire story, is the distribution between outsourcing, outstaffing and product uh, or startup companies, because the product companies are one type of company that's already not just providing services for others anymore, but is launching their own products. The value added intensity is usually higher in such companies because they're marketing their own product. And this share is, has been increasing throughout the years that we're looking there. I think that's not the entire story, as I said, because even within the outsourcing, outstaffing companies, some of the major companies in Ukraine are still classified under those. And even those have developed massively. And to some extent, I think the, the note, uh, the sort of denominator of an outsourcing or outstaffing company is by far not not really quite accurate anymore and these companies are not sort of outsourcing and they're not doing you know do something in Ukraine but they're just offering services on a globally competitive scale and I think that's really the de uh, development of the Ukrainian IT sector far in uh, into much more advanced territory not uh, not extremely cheap, but still very cost effective. Uh, and I think that's a, a discussion we should probably lead in a moment. Uh, but also, I think the, the main note is, is the quality of service that is being provided and, and the type of service. And I think uh, that is much more advanced than uh, sometimes, uh, unfortunately, is, is being presumed uh, what, of what is being done in Ukraine. It's, it's much more advanced than that. Let's move to slide number 16. Exactly. Thank you. Um, Growth of the sector, of, uh, of course, is a crucial issue for Ukraine. How can it grow further? And the main uh, bottleneck for growth of an IT sector always is the education of, uh, of young uh, skilled professionals. Here we see a certain uh, issue in Ukraine. Usually there is the idea that post-Soviet countries have a very good uh, basic mathematics and uh, STEM, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics uh, education. Um, what we see in the figures is not, not not quite as great, to be honest. We see that the PISA scores, so these standardized uh, primary school exams in Ukraine in the mathematics and science fields are pretty poor. So it may point at a certain heterogeneity among schools. I, I, I would suppose that there is a certain uh, difference between schools uh, that are sort of in the more affluent districts and uh, schools that perhaps are in poorer districts. I'm not quite sure where exactly this originates from, but certainly we do see a clear 
um, distance between Ukraine, uh, even Germany, and, and, and Estonia, which is sort of the, the main leader in, in this field. In uh, university graduates uh, in those fields, also Ukraine is roughly comparable, but it's not not quite as elite here. Germany obviously is, is extremely advanced and uh, producing very many engineers for its uh, huge manufacturing sector. So I think what's uh, an important message for Ukrainian policymakers is that in order to extend this compet comparative advantage that they have in the IT sector, indeed, uh, investment in education needs to be prioritized. And uh, what already companies in the IT sectors and the many, many IT clusters that we see formed around the country are doing is investing quite heavily in uh, education and uh, very often, for example, what they need to do is provide uh, university graduates with more skills in the in the current techniques, because very often the university curricula are somewhat outdated. So from primary school on to university, we do certainly see a, certain, a, a need for action. Finally, just as a last slide, um, one important thing uh, is the question of how uh, the sector is being promoted, how its growth is being driven by the government. And there are many, many government initiatives indeed uh, directed at uh, digitalization in general, a sort of e-government, a lot of that. Uh, there is uh, uh, things for business startups and so on. There is also a startup fund, which uh, can finance the growth of IT startups. One important development for the IT uh, sector is the DR City program. And the DR City program is important, especially because it's sort of trying to create um, not a physical, but I think a, a virtual, but a, a regulatory business park in which uh, a tax regime, especially, is being created that, that is equivalent in a, a sense to um, the tax regime of that. Um, uh, individual entrepreneurs or the de facto employees enjoy at present. So I think what's important about this is that this will uh, that this will provide a permanent uh, regulatory environment in which this uh, tax advantage can be maintained, even if some sort of uh, enforcement of uh, combating fake employment is being done throughout other sectors, because that's the, usually this would be a um, a problem if, for example, fake employment in the hotel industry is being combated, it would be hard not to do it in the IT sector. And obviously, there is an, a valid argument that uh, the IT sector with uh, high global competition, with high wages as well, but the, it is exposed to global competition and uh, the tax advantage may be a crucial part, uh, ingredient in the mix. So this would provide it a permanent uh, regulatory environment. However, the tax rules have not been passed uh, through the parliament yet, but I think in general, this is an important important um, uh, initiative. It's not only the tax rules, it's much more. It's a, a, a very comprehensive regulatory regime that the IT sector should enjoy. And I think this is an important development to watch. And I would also be interested to hear the views of the Ukrainian IT sector representatives of what they think about this. From my part, this would be everything for now. I hope I've roughly stayed in time and uh, I look forward to an interesting discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, David. So I just take over immediately without further ado uh, for the discussion. Uh, um, you touched very uh, lots of points we, we, we can discuss. So I, I try to structure the discussion a bit, but uh, would like to encourage everybody to make і всі, хто має певну зацікавленість в певних темах, можна по цій темі дати from uh, from uh, from the on spot from the working level. Um, so first I would uh, welcome our speakers or our panelists uh, for our discussion in the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes. Um, there is first uh, Natalie Bermeyeva. Uh, Natalie, hello to Kiev. Uh, she's uh, the CEO of Tech Ukraine, a uh, networking and information platform or hub, uh, hopefully described correctly. We have, uh, secondly, uh, Josephine Gala. Uh, she is the managing director uh, of SAP Southeast Europe and Ukraine. Welcome, uh, Josephine, to the discussion. We have, thirdly, uh, Alexander Davidenko from uh, Techia Group. Uh, he is uh, there, uh, serves as the Chief Innovation Officer. Welcome, Alexander. And last but not least, you know him already, uh, David Chaha, as a fourth panelist, uh, the man who has to answer everything that is asked today. Uh, so, but first, uh, uh, I would like to start with, with a round among the panelists and getting from 
uh, feedback from 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 you uh, about the findings, the key findings of uh, of the of the survey of the monitor. Maybe we can start with Natalie from from Tech Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe a first comment. Uh, maybe you can highlight uh, one or two key aspects from your point of view. Mm -hmm. And I would attach um, uh, a question uh, uh, first to you. Uh, David tackled this topic of uh, rising wages uh, in combination with um, um, some shortage of workforce supply. So what is your expe expectation or assessment? How does this go on? How, how will the, um, the growth of wages um, go on and until which level Ukraine will be competitive? So I, when I see the data correctly, uh, that is a question you have to discuss right now. So Natalie, please. Absolutely. Thank you for the interesting question. And uh, first of all, I was really delighted to see such a comprehensive survey uh, with uh, a lot of data. And uh, uh, it's very nice to see the uh, deep interest in Ukrainian economy and Ukrainian IT sector from the uh, Berlin economic team. And um, uh, generally, I think uh, just having such documents are very helpful for businesses uh, in Germany to make the right decisions about uh, doing business with Ukraine. So this is really very relevant and my deepest respect and gratitude to the ones uh, that are doing this. Um, I think that um, uh, indeed in the survey, a lot of uh, tendencies and a lot of trends um, uh, correctly um, uh, represented because indeed uh, uh, we do have uh, like the current uh, structure of the market as it is stated over there and indeed our services part is bigger than the product part. Uh, I, I think that uh, also the authors of the survey did a good job in just uh, trying to uh, make, um, just to analyze um, in the situation when a lot of companies are registered not in Ukraine but in other countries and it's difficult just to calculate the real number of IT companies when they are like uh, consisting of private entrepreneurs in Ukraine and um, uh, registered some elsewhere. So I think this this was the challenges. And I know this also from my experience because uh, we did the audit of all available reports a couple of years ago for the Minister of D Digital uh, Transformation because we know that uh, there was a mess uh, with the data before. Uh, so just uh, it was interesting also for me to see how how, how this was uh, done in this case. I think that also one of the um, difficult points was to calculate the number of experts, uh, the size of experts, because uh, we have different data. The National Bank is giving one figure and the association is uh, just giving one figure uh, around 5 billion and the statistics uh, is giving another one, it's around uh, 3 billion. So I think uh, that uh, here, because of this situation with the private entrepreneurs versus companies versus different locations, um, like I think that that was a challenge and the authors of the survey just uh, coped with this uh, uh, their way and uh, so we have another reliable source of data and I'm really personally delighted about that. Uh, so speaking about the trends here, uh, indeed, uh, still the service part is big, but indeed we do have uh, the product part that is growing. Uh, the wages, um, answering, uh, I think, uh, immediately your question, Stefan. Uh, yes, I think that this 700 that, well, that is stated in the survey is the official number. The actual number is really much higher, um, also partially because it's private entrepreneurs that are uh, really taking uh, the, like, it's, it's the key model for the market at the moment. Um, uh, and here, like I think immediately answering, answering the, the question about the wages and about their um, perspectives, uh, I believe that uh, Ukrainian native sector is uh, moving towards maturing and towards being not just a cheap outsourcing location, but rather um, an IT location uh, with good quality of services and products. And um, so we are um, like this is another step for us uh, to, to take. Um, so indeed the companies, because we do have very high uh, competition for uh, resources already now. Um, and um, as, as was also stated in the survey around, um, I think um, just it's just much higher the number of vacancies than the number of uh, um, actually uh, people uh, that are able to fill fill these vacancies. So that means that the labor market is 
heating and uh, this tendency is conti continue to grow because IT sector in Ukraine is attracting the international attention of more and more companies who do want to do business with Ukraine and in Ukraine. And that means that this tendency is not going to disappear. Um, so this competition for resources is there and we are going just to uh, enter maybe um, not the global uh, level, but still uh, our wages um, uh, are growing and this is um, uh, the process that is not contradicting the general tendency. Uh, and here I think the solution, and this is something that our companies are really actively moving into and um, uh, going into, is uh, to do the added value services and also goods. So the, the, the point is not to make our software developers cheaper, but to, um, uh, to, to provide mature services and also uh, start doing more products uh, that would compensate for this uh, additional uh, like increase of uh, the wages so that our companies become internationally competitive, be it um, uh, outsourcing companies uh, coming from Ukraine or international company, uh, companies that are doing business in Ukraine. So we're entering this uh, competition like if in, in, in outsourcing first, like you have the company that is servicing end clients, and then you have outsourcing company that is servicing this company. So our companies are currently growing just to get to the point where they will reach end clients. And um, I think that uh, the representative offices, the sales offices that are being opened by biggest outsourcing companies and also product companies reaching the end clients and their markets actually also shows that this is really something that the industry is moving into at the moment and this is this will continue to grow so our solution would be uh, to, 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 to become more mature and we are really pushed into it and um, this will be um, slight change but at the same time big opportunity because since 1991 and you see that the first IT outsourcing companies were registered almost immediately after the independence was gained um, so this base uh, was created uh, with us understanding um, the, uh, um, uh, the way how the international markets are working, the way how how international businesses are operating. So I think this learning curve uh, is uh, currently done. And um, the next phase would be this uh, um, further growth and uh, uh, change in this uh, relations so that Ukraine becomes uh, equal and uh, just a valuable member of this uh, uh, global IT se sector market. So this is in short, that if you have any specific questions, I will be happy to, sh to, to answer, but like really, I think this was a nice job and it was a pleasure to hear this presentation. Thank you, uh, Natalie, for your comments. And it was a perfect, perfect bridge to the next question or to the next speakers. Uh, thank you very much. So we're moving from the wages to the question uh, of this trend. Um, or if, if there's a structural change already, you can see from uh, just outsourcing companies towards product companies. And I guess, uh, uh, Josephine Gala from SAP and Alexander Davidenko are the, the perfect people to reflect on this on this question. Maybe of course take the chance to to give your uh, general reflection on the on the survey and then uh, maybe as a add-on uh, reflection on this topic on this trend um, or if if you see such a structural change and uh, how you assess it. Please, Josephine. Well, thanks for, for having me. And uh, yes, I think the, the study is pretty much in accordance with what we see here as, um, as SAP, as, as one of those MNCs that wants to do business in Ukraine. And by the way, we are registered here. So uh, we, we thrive for local growth. So we're very proud of that. Um, I do think that uh, specifically the part of the state of digital transformation was quite interesting. Um, I do have to say that I, I also see that it's there, there is a lack of decision intelligence, which is um, in accordance with what you were talking about when you were saying, well, the whole big data topic that is in other countries where more matured uh, is not a thing here. And I believe it's not so much for a lack of data or actual digitization. We see um, lots of clients uh, as well as the government actually using uh, some sort of an IT system. Uh, I think it is more the bringing together and, and taking a decision and, and moving forward uh, uh, with uh, specific insights. Uh, that is what uh, we also feel is a, is a little bit lacking. It, it may be due to hesitance or to uh, a lack of resources on, on either side. Um, I'm, I'm not the best judge as to why, but uh, that is also 
um, what we have seen. Um, and I think uh, the whole idea of modern, agile, uh, cloud-based infrastructure is absolutely missing at the moment. So wherever I go, um, I'm seeing a lot of tendencies to, to deal rather in on-prem deployments and, and yes, but we need to buy boxes and we need to have everything in country. And um, I strongly disagree with that. I mean, obviously we don't want um, citizen data to be uh, put somewhere in an unsafe cloud, but uh, I do believe that there are other ways and, and everyone is uh, apparently using Facebook here. Uh, so, or, or WhatsApp or Instagram or whatnot, uh, TikTok. <laughs> and those are all, um, cloud-based applications. Uh, so the hesitance of um, moving towards more modern and agile infrastructures is, is very, very apparent here uh, to us in, in the public and in the private sector um, equally. Um, I think the, the one thing that I feel where Ukraine has to uh, watch out is to not become just an offshore country, uh, because that usually is not good for the country itself. Um, uh, just just having the resources producing something and then it actually leaves the country, the services leave the country, um, has not been uh, a, a great model. Uh, I used to work in Southeast Asia. I've seen it happening a lot in, um, you know, in India where things have shifted now to the Philippines. Uh, and now India is basically there with all their labs and um, too many people that don't do the work anymore because it has shifted. So um, I believe we uh, in Ukraine must really, really watch out that we actually do hop on the trend of producing um, our own uh, products, uh, maybe on, on, on great new infrastructures and platforms. And I'm not just saying that at uh, SAP, I'm, I'm saying that as we, we have a lot of really cool talent, we have a lot of uh, smart people that could do so much more if we gave them a little bit of a, of a platform um, to push forward. And uh, I think this is um, definitely a trend that we are seeing. I do think that as industry, we must provide that infrastructure like um, um, uh, incubators for startups. Not every person that has a great idea is um, you know, necessarily an IT professional. So you have a great idea, you want to create an app, but you lack the IT knowledge, or you know a lot about IT, but you're not that really good in business. So I think we need to bring um, uh, all these things rather together. And um, then we can actually talk about, there is a trend of uh, the productization of IT services. Um, and it's very, very dangerous to just rely on the digital transformation consultancy that I see everywhere. Apparently everyone is a digital transformation expert, everyone, uh, whoever I talk to, and they all consult <laughs> companies on this is how you digitally transform, which is great. But I think I would also prefer um, to give people um, a platform that really add to the value of, of many, many companies. And um, I think I've, I've seen the first steps on, on simple apps um, that are working here, really great, um, including, uh, which is unfortunately, it's not a Ukrainian app, but Glovo works perfectly. Yeah, I, I was order, able to order my food um, uh, just the other day. So imagine that could be easily um, something that we have created here in Ukraine um, for the Ukrainian market. And I think uh, that is something that the industry must take note of um, and companies like SAP must foster otherwise we will end up just attracting um you know the the offshore investments and that's not something that's very very sustainable because if you look at the wages and how long you are actually competitive as long as you are not compromising on quality or price but if you look at romania we have low wages high quality and everyone is now moving to Romania. So, you know, uh, it was Bulgaria before, now it's Romania, now it's increasing in Ukraine. When, when do we start becoming competition between Romania and Ukraine? And when does it start to be just a trend of, we are just providing those uh, services as a near shore center or offshore center? Thank you very much, uh, Josephine. I get this topic of um, supporting entrepreneurs in the end. It's, it's very important uh, and moving away from just consultancy, but really to, to um, support entrepreneurs, I guess it's very, very important, a very good point. Alexander, talking about entrepreneurs and uh, companies who are doing the work, <laughs> I guess yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's uh, thank you, Josephine, for this bridge again. 
uh, Alexander, what are, what are your reflections about the findings? And maybe you can refer to, uh, to what speakers before said um, from your point of view, from your assessment, please. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Survey was precise and have very broad and precise representation of what's actually going here. I'm here, yes, from a startup and product-oriented part of community. And I have few thesis with me about the paradigm shift about what is going on on the lower part of the market, actually where we are with our startups, with our initiatives and all the stuff is what is going on. Uh, actually on the slide 10, it was small shift in the statistics, like few percents uh, shifting from outsource to product. But actually it doesn't represent the real paradigm shift that is going on in last year because we have last year was the greatest year of all time for grain, for startups, for products, for exits, for stories that uh, make people go to build their things. St stop working in outsource. We have outsource actually uh, in our holding. Of course, everyone have outsourced in Ukraine in the holding, but I'm running a venture studio inside HEA and we are running startups. We're launching startups on a daily basis, actually. And we see this paradigm shift. Guys see news, they read about uh, GitLab, they read about Grammarly, they read about uh, People IE, they read about those multi-billion stories. And uh, they go to the market, they launch their startups, they uh, left work and uh, in outsource and go build something there is a huge huge boom in 2021 on funds on new funds on new funding on new venture studios launched in ukraine and this is all about building new small thing that will grow in few years to unicorns and decacorns and we are actually doing quite that we are building we help build uh, new startups. I mentored in few incubators. We participate in probably a dozen of initiatives inside Ukraine. Actually, I'm sitting here inside of one of our startups, which build uh, drones. Also, we have hardware lab here. And in this hardware lab, we have like four startups building their prototypes inside of our infrastructure. We invest like a few hundred thousand dollars in infrastructure and we share it to give to new founders, to new builders, to give them opportunity, to give them test and try things, fail, whatever. We uh, do all of that, that was mentioned. And it's absolutely, I I'm in this, I have also actually ICT and consultancy background. I was building infrastructures <laughs> for long years, for more than 10 years I've built banks Lots of banks actually in Ukraine. There, there was uh, sometime boom of banks, yeah, like ten years ago. Uh, we were been building this. So, and actually, the core of our uh, Techia team is from this building, uh, this side of business: ICT, consultancy, infrastructure building. But now we are moving to products. The biggest stories in our holding are products. They are all products. Um, this, this is my point. Let's build products. Thank you very much, Alexander. So, um, so you mentioned uh, small in, in, uh, in numbers when it comes to percentage, but you see uh, on, on the ground uh, the trend that people are taking it up and do not want to be the programmer for someone else, but doing something on, on their own. Uh, David, um, um, I just want to give the word to you. Um, um, hearing all these comments and the insights. Uh, maybe you could give us a feedback or first flashlight. Um, uh, what is your impression? Does it match with your uh, findings, with your macro uh, things you found out in the, in the survey, uh, just to get a um, yeah. um, short feedback from your side? Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, thank you, first of all, for all these uh, very friendly comments. <laughs> I think uh, grateful for the appreciation that you voiced. Um, I think firstly, uh, 
Yes, uh, I think what, what we see is that uh, especially um, the, the Ukrainian uh, side really did agree that there is this development into product, that there is the deepening of the value chain, and that I think is, uh, is very much resonating with what we're finding. But I think at the same time, it's also a, a very interesting the point uh, that Josephine um, made, that uh, the question is that to what extent is modern cloud infrastructure already used, because it does resonate with one thing we found for the wider Ukrainian economy that uh, across the Ukrainian economy outside the IT sector, companies are not uh, not sufficient. That there is a real disc disconnect, and this for, for us that was. Uh, quite interesting because Ukraine seems to have this extremely competitive, just seeing the wages uh, far out uh, outside the national average, uh, this very competitive IT sector, and it has uh, a less competitive general economy or less um, uh, productive general economy. And we're seeing this disconnect that uh, in the wider economy, for example, use of cloud architecture is, uh, is limited, use of uh, advanced uh, digital tools is relatively limited, while at the same time, obviously, the IT sector is theoretically offering all uh, all those services so one question for me is how could the wider economy of ukraine benefit uh, from uh, from the it sector uh, at the same time uh, i would be interested in uh, hearing whether some of the uh, the, the drawbacks that Josephine mentioned are also pertaining to the IT sector itself. So is there, is there to some extent, are there some startups that are not fully uh, exploiting the, uh, the benefits and the opportunities uh, being provided by, by, by a cloud-based infrastructure? So this immediate and huge scalability of your product, because I think that's, that, that would be an important uh, thing to, to, for, for the sector to work on indeed. And, uh, and then finally, also just as one thing I'm really curious about is, uh, I would like it would be very interested to hear from the other panelists where they think uh, the potential offerings of of the Ukrainian sector, as we are in a German uh, Ukrainian forum here, uh, are for for potential German clients. Where where could the sort of bilateral uh, business relations? Where, where where do you see the the sweet spots? Where do you see the opportunities for those? But I think firstly, maybe uh, I would be really interested to get into the discussion of is sort of uh, the Ukrainian IT sector is it just a matter of uh, transferring its advantages into the wider economy or are, are there also some issues indeed in the sector that could uh, could further boost its competitiveness uh, that Thank would you. be sort of my main interest emerging from the comments so i've asked questions i've not said much but i've asked questions because i found that really quite inspiring thank you but therefore we are here david to have this interaction so um, um okay we have two questions one is uh, this uh, the question of spillover effects uh, advanced it industry with solutions versus uh, uh, traditional industry uh, which does not really apply it in a in a broader sense and the second one is where do you, where do you see the uh, uh, the main aspects uh, for german ukrainian um, cooperation maybe we can start um, with natalie then josephine then alexander please uh, thank you for the question. Um, really very interesting. And I think um, answering the, the first one about the opportunities of the cooperation, uh, I would say that, uh, yes, we did great job uh, in developing this service part, but we also see uh, there are some hidden points that actually could be further developed. And I see here this manufacturing part and also this part with the deep tech uh, and with further integration with the industries that is is not being um, developed yet, but there is a huge potential here uh, because Germany traditionally is very strong uh, in, in terms of IT, but also in terms of manufacturing and production. Uh, in Ukraine, there used to be such potential and we do still have uh, quite a number of uh, IT uh, and engineering graduates. Um, so uh, number we were 3,000 um, uh, IT graduates per year and around 130,000 engineering graduates per year. So we actually are issuing and we have like a massive number of uh, engineers. Um, and uh, I think that the next step for Ukrainian IT is uh, to go further just from the pure software into the software that is being connected to the industry. And this is actually something that Germany is very strong in. So automation, robotization, uh, all sorts of different uh, solutions uh, for different industries. This could be an option. And uh, I think uh, that also 
So Ukrainian market is still mm, comparatively small, so it's difficult to work with that, but this is not going to be like that all the time. I think that uh, and also one potential opportunity, I don't know how much is it the short term or the mid term, but the eventually will be there. Uh, the digitalization also of the Ukrainian market, because of course there is a, a lot of different solutions already being applied on other markets and Ukrainian market is still not uh, um, actually digitalized yet and there is a giant opportunity for German companies also to, to help with this digitalization because sooner or later we will need to make this step in order to make uh, all our industries uh, like more competitive on the international market and without the digitalization this is not possible and our fresh ministry of digital transformation is already doing a lot uh, in this digitalization, we have DA business uh, consultancy for entrepreneurs that wanted to, their enterprises to digitalize. We have education courses for the general mass uh, uh, digitalization of the population. So I think that this could be the difficult but potentially very um, well, value in the, in the end when they are developed. Um, and uh, the second question uh, was uh, about... Um, uh, Stephen, no, can you... I, I, guess, I guess you answered those questions. Uh, spillover effects and the question of uh, where, do you, where do you see cooperation supports for German and Ukrainian companies, but you answered everything in one question. So uh, the transformation <laughs> issue, I guess you see yeah, some... Okay. some yeah, I think generally, of course, uh, Ukrainian companies are having a lot of different um, variants where they are developing, um, but this is like the pain point that just really needs to further develop so that we have a, a more or less uh, harmonious um, uh, development. And I think here is big potential, yes. So I just want to, uh, before I give the word to Josefina and Alexander, just to mention that we, in this framework of our German-Ukrainian digital partnership, we gained a uh, medium-sized German company as partner <clears throat> who's interested to gain more Ukrainian startups in their supply chains and value added change. And they, they are really doing this transformation uh, topic, how to, how to combine um, and use uh, technology advance or startups, uh, um, ideas and technologies, and how to transform it to the typical uh, industrial company. So um, this, I, can, we can, I guess we can uh, take up in, in the next year. So, but now, Josephine, please. Spillover effects and where do you see touch points for German Ukrainian cooperation? I think what is um, what I've seen is, um, and I'm going to start with the collaboration first, and probably within that, I hope to, to answer uh, the spillover effect question. Um, so, to me, obviously, uh, what Germany has been leading in is Industry 4.0, everything that's industry, and that's great. And I kind of can feel there's even a little fatigue in any other country to every time when it comes to uh, like Industry 4.0, uh, Germany is being mentioned. Um, uh, but I do think actually we can take that expertise and, and bring it um, into Ukraine. Um, However, I also feel that specifically in Ukraine, you have a more daring clientele. So our customers are doing things that I don't see happening in, uh, in Germany, actually. Um, so there is um, a, a lot more trial and error going on um, than uh, in Germany. In Germany, we are so trained to, you know, like we have this plan and this is the outcome and we must follow this plan. Um, in, in Ukraine, um, our colleagues are much more used to like, okay, this didn't work, let's try this. This didn't work, let's try this. Um, I think this is actually a perfect sort of, um, you know, exchange. If I could exchange some experts, I would probably do that. Um, I think there is a little bit less fear of failure in the business, um, which also is reflecting um, the, the, the density of entrepreneurs and, and startups. That we that we see growing here. Um, the the other thing that I would love to bring over rather um, or where I would collaborate more is again the talent issue. Um, I think we we have very very smart people uh, in in Ukraine. We have very smart young uh, students. I, I don't know what I did when I was 18, but the people that I've met here are definitely much much smarter than I ever was. So um, what is lacking a little bit. I would say um, are two things. One is uh, the, um, the the how to say the problem solving rather than just following 
what they've been told. I think some of the soft skills could be very, very helpful um, a little bit. Um, that, that is something I would love to see more. And I know that specifically design thinking, all these more collaborative ways of, of, of doing business um, are not that widespread here um, in, in Ukraine. I think this would be really great to see uh, it implemented in universities. To, to have this fostered, this culture, this discussion culture in, that we have in, in Germany, where we are putting stuff on the table, we talk about it, and after that we go for a beer and still like each other. Uh, here, things are being taken quite personal if you are slightly disagreeing with one or the other approach. Um, however, I also feel that we are not making it attractive enough for people to stay here in Ukraine. So uh, what I haven't seen in, in, in Germany is this massive brain drain. Here in Ukraine, we have such a massive brain drain that even though we're building talents, we're having all these cool and smart people. And the next thing you know is they go to UK, US, Germany, anywhere else but Ukraine. So I think uh, even though the wages are high, I think there's something else missing. And I think this could be something that we could also think about to, to make it a little bit more um, attractive and it will eventually help the economy if you have some people that are actually staying and contributing to the country rather than you know going abroad and um, I think we've seen very very good things there in, in Germany happening as well. Thank you very much uh, Josephine. Alexandra could you uh, or do you have this experience that people are leaving despite high wages? Josephine said okay high wages yes but obviously something else uh, drives the people to leave the country despite high, rate, high wages. So what is your experience? Mm, there is for sure competence uh, competition for uh, skilled workers and they do leave but sometimes they do get back and build some interesting things here so not ev everything is dark i do absolutely want to support natalia's standpoint and because this is what i do actually uh, that not all startups should be pure software we support education initiations in a few technical universities and we don't see lack of uh, talents yeah we see but we do see lack of expertise in verticals and because there is not so much uh, developed verticals in ukraine locally and this uh, brings us to uh, talented guys uh, living for not for money but for education for opportunities for new experience because there is not much to do here because of this lack of uh, variety of expert of uh, verticals and the way we uh, solve this uh, is actually why uh, i'm in tci and what i'm doing we are working inside of our venture building studio with our international partners and we develop uh, solutions for their insights in verticals we uh, develop we try to develop uh, solutions which have the potential to be built in standalone startup and this is our approach so we are basically doing just what natalia mentioned we are those guys who search uh, expertise we ask questions we uh, do customer development uh, we do we do invest with our partners resources so it's not a pure outsource where, yeah, okay, we have the solution, it costs 500k and we will get back in a year. No, we are working in an agile framework using Scrum, uh, making very short development cycles. And we are building, at the moment, we are building like five startups inside of this framework with international uh, international partners and international customers. Like uh, we have a sales office in California where people uh, do work every day on building, on finding new insights, new opportunities, new partners, new investors for our initiatives. <laughs> so this is an, another side of this IT building startup uh, community of Ukraine and and representing actually it. Thank you very much. So good, good news uh, that this process already is reflected by by companies, and that you are working on on this. And I'm not alone. And You're it, not alone. And, and, and positive examples, I guess, gives gives uh, um, others an impulse that it makes sense to do it, and not only waiting for for um, a request from outside and uh, coding something. 
Um, I would uh, right now ask or have a look into the audience and to the participants if there are any questions or, or comments from your side. So you have our experts here and the chance to um, get deeper into the findings of, of the monitor or asking uh, entrepreneurs here. So if you have a question, so raise your digital hand or use a chat to, to write it. Um, if you need some time to think about it, it's no, it's no problem. Um, I will take up another thing uh, we, um, um, David mentioned and we, we discussed. It is uh, the special situation in Ukraine with this um, uh, individual entrepreneurs. Um, um, and the question, my, my question or my, yeah, my question is, uh, is this the model for the future? So you, you see that the sector is growing with this kind of, with this model of this uh, um, uh, individual, individual entrepreneurs. So what is your, your, what are your thoughts about? Is this really the, the, uh, the, the model uh, which leads to growth in the future or will this change or what is your, your expectation? Because David, you said it's, there are some, let's say discussions about it. So what is your assessment? Will it last for the next 20 years? Or do we see us at a certain point um, a structural or a reshape on that? So that would be really interesting for me. Interesting for me. Who else would take the floor, Natalie? Yeah, I will do it with pleasure because I was um, uh, thinking about that. Uh, I believe that indeed, actually, the world is going into the direction where every person is an individual uh, creator. And uh, if you see the modern styles of management, you have this so-called project teams that are gathered to do specific projects and they are just reshaping. So I believe that actually uh, this model of private entrepreneurs is uh, really something that is just working. It's uh, proved its efficiency. And I think that we definitely do not need to force companies to quit this model because it's not only just from the point of view of tax uh, taxation that is uh, um, good and valuable, but also from the point of view that people are taking the responsibility of their own lives and they're feeling as entrepreneurs, uh, even if uh, this is just a formality, because I remember how I myself in uh, 2005, uh, like uh, the company opened for me, the private entrepreneur account, and I felt different, um, just even um, just being not an employee, but like a private entrepreneur. This is a shift in the consciousness, and this is actually boosting um, the creativity and this uh, independence of a person, like uh, independent thinking, and this uh, this is like really important. Um, but I believe that uh, the state needs to also give the choice. Uh, so I also really highly welcome uh, the current process in DA City where the, you have the so-called employees, but they will work on gig contracts and they will have uh, to pay less taxes than just on the market because I believe that the IT sector really needs to have some tax incentives uh, in this or that way. Maybe not so big as we currently enjoy, but still something. Uh, so I think uh, that the employee model is also working. Uh, companies just need to have a choice and they need to have some equal uh, choice that, that they can just choose from uh, what is the best model for the company and also employee needs to also have this uh, freedom uh, to choose whether they want to be an employee or the private entrepreneur so both models i think will continue uh, growing but i think that gradually the world just generally shifting towards more independence from the point of view of every single person that is just giving their not only just the, um, uh, the physical uh, uh, power, but also the mental power. And I think that the more independent we are, the more creative we are able to be and the best we can show and add to the company. So just the, this is like, I think the question more of the general shift of how the value is being created in businesses worldwide. Um, so I think that Ukraine um, uh, by, by chance hit the right spot in the very, very early days when it was not the trend yet. Alexander, do you, do you agree or do you see something else in the future? Well, my first uh, internet project was in like 2001. In 2005, I was building an uh, e-commerce shop on myself. So I'm like private entrepreneur for all, all my life, actually. And this do resonates with me. And I know 
huge amount of people that are doing the same. But there was always a problem with opportunities. There was always a problem with funding. There was always a problem with law. Uh, there was problem always uh, with possibilities that were available, available here. And this is changing. And this is changing very fast in the last few years. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, and how, how, Josephine, how does SAP see it? So, uh, of course, uh, several hundred thousand employees around the globe. So, uh, somehow different from this model of uh, uh, private entrepreneur. What is your your uh, reflection on this, on, on the developments maybe expected? Uh, well, SAP has um, come to recognize also that uh, we have um, a, a great product uh, portfolio, obviously. Um, but also we are still very much a standard software provider, meaning to say that uh, we do uh, need entrepreneurs specifically in the tech environment that help supplement our products. Um, uh, and we've seen it across the globe uh, in Asia, in, in, in North America, where uh, young smart spirits have helped to build on our platform something on top that really, really added value. Um, um, and they, they are much more flexible, uh, trying and using um, technologies like machine learning to optimize uh, routes uh, for, for fleets and etc. So there's uh, many, many, many use cases where we feel that entrepreneurs are an important part of our ecosystem and that they actually do add value, which then also led um, to the creation of uh, what we call SAP uh, IO. Um, it's kind of a venture capital um, organization within SAP. Um, we're not as mean as Shark Tank, but it kind of goes with the Shark Tank concept where um, uh, entrepreneurs have a chance um, to apply with us and um, they would receive a funding if their business idea um, is, is actually um, uh, deemed to, to, to be a valid business case. Um, we are looking obviously more towards the IT part. Um, there, I'm sure there's other entrepreneurs out there that do many other good things. But yes, so for us, um, this trend has to continue um, because um, with all the big MNCs uh, that are less agile, um, we are not going to be able to provide um, our customers with the value, with the full value um, that they may need in one or the other niche um, that goes uh, across 27 industries, um, uh, from starting from, from government all the way to pharmaceuticals, to, uh, to logistics, it doesn't matter. There's always a little piece that we may not be able to provide, but someone else um, using the right technology will be able to put on top um, of, of our technology and then um, the customer will be able to harvest um, the, the benefits out of it. Thank you very much. So uh, you, you rely on uh, the, creativ the creativity that uh, uh, private entrepreneurs can can bring into the process. So that's yeah. to, to to sum up the, the, the your statements. Uh, having a look on on the on 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 the on the on the watch on the time. So we have some five minutes left, and I would like to um, ask you for a last a last statements. One sentence um, I prepared. Uh, I would like to answer first Natalie, then Alexander, then Josephine, and then handing the last word to to David. Uh, um, so, to, um, hearing from you, hearing from you, what you take up from this from this discussion, my question would be, and please answer in one sentence: What do you expect, or what is the most important thing the government, the Ukrainian government, must do in the next twelve months? One sentence, please. And what is the most important thing the business community must do in the next twelve months to, um, yeah, push the sector and push the developments we discussed today? So um, please, Natalie, Alexandra, Josephine, and then David, you can take up the sentence as well. And you have maybe a, a bit more than one sentence to, to sum up and answer. So please, Natalie. Uh, well, I think that the most important thing that the government is uh, doing and um, needs to do is uh, the, the current burning issue, the next one is the education. So I think that solving the need in, um, uh, like in more bigger number of IT professionals with higher uh, quality is really crucial. And also finish what they're currently doing, this DACT legislation and some other activities as well. Uh, as for the business, I think um, uh, two things. Uh, first, uh, further develop the entrepreneurship. So I think that like what is currently happening in the terms of startups and product companies is really 
impressive. So this needs to, to, to grow and to go on. And the second is the promotion of the sector. This is what we are doing at Tech Ukraine. And I think that uh, uh, uniting us and uh, sharing with the rest of the world what is happening is in Ukraine is really crucial. So I think these things. Thank you. Alexander? Uh, for the government, I think that they just need to stay on the course of uh, reforms and uh, move, probably speeding up some pace, but move the same direction. And for the community, I'd like to see more initiatives like SAP-AO in Ukraine and uh, such kind of things. I would like to have more partners coming here with uh, demand for solution with uh, deep expertise in uh, different verticals to work with. This is very needed. Okay, thank you. Josephine? For well, governments, I would say I would love for them to continue optimize the idea of having people, platform and policy together and going all in one direction and getting the right enablement. Um, you need the right people to run the platform and then those people can determine what right what is the right policy rather than starting somewhere and then hoping to develop from there. And uh, yes, for the industry, I agree with uh, Alexander uh, that we uh, need to continue fostering uh, the, the, the entrepreneurship uh, in country, but also we need to continue the dialogue with the government to help them understand um, what are the best practices outside uh, and globally, because uh, someone else probably has also already done it before. Okay, thank you very much. So um, in a nutshell, David, what do you do with these findings? In the next year. Yes, uh, thank you. <laughs> it, it, it's and quite they're, 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 Therefore, I'm ending my moderation in the discussion and thank the panelists and handing over uh, the words to, uh, the, to the one who started uh, Today. We started this. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for your participation. I really valued uh, some interesting uh, comments, and I think I was also really um, happy to hear how much you em emphasized this entrepreneurial spirit, which is essential and which needs to continue because I think that's been driving Ukraine's IT sector into where it is now. Uh, it's, uh, I think, one thing I would be so happy to see. Uh, succeeding more throughout the economy. I think it's, it's a proof that Ukraine has it. It's, it's all there. Everyone can do it. I think uh, very often uh, the entrepreneurial spirit of young people, which is there, which can be fostered, which can be brought to, to shine, um, is, is sort of being uh, simply inhibited by old structures in, in, in the rest of the economy. And I think the IT sector is a glowing example that it can work. And I think that should be fostered and promoted. For me, what, what should be happening? I think the government is on a good track, really, when it comes to uh, IT uh, innovation. It has uh, created the Ministry of Digital Transformation. There are some initiatives that are really having a lot of traction, which I think many of the participants from the industry have also talked to uh, were quite happy about and said, look, uh, for the past uh, decades, that's the best we've been seeing. So that's, that's actually one of the areas where uh, I've heard a lot of positive feedback from industry representatives. And I think that, that's, a good, that's a good sign. That should be continued. And this dialogue with the industry, this sort of quick and disruptive thinking, this sort of not just working along old institutional structures that's one very good direction for the ukrainian state to take obviously education remains extremely important this needs to be uh, beefed up to have more of these people uh, providing services that can be a complete uh, comparative advantage of the ukrainian economy and i think finally what i would be really so happy to see is if these advantages of the it sector that exist could be spill, uh, spilling over more into the rest of the economy i think to some extent What's necessary for that is for people in the rest of the economy to accept that this is not just a local service you purchase, because in the mindset of a local service, it's way too expensive, but it's not. It's a global, a global service. If you're buying a digitalization product, that's a globally competitive service. It just so happens that it's actually being created next door. And I think that's really one thing where I would be so happy to see the digitalization of the broad economy driving uh, and being uh, being promoted through this uh, excellent IT sector, which is just next door. And I think that would be an, a, a very, very excellent uh, potential for the Ukrainian economy to just utilize that. Yeah, for my, as it's the last word, I have to say thank you, everyone. <laughs> and 
thank you, Stefan, for hosting this. Thank you for some excellent moderation. Was really happy uh, about that. Uh, thank you to the other panelists. I really valued your input and hope to stay in touch. Everyone, I think, uh, who's on the who signed up. Uh, will be receiving the publication or already has received that uh, by email that uh, that I think uh, will be our aftercare and otherwise I hope to see you again sometime soon in another few format. May, bye bye. May I just may I just um, uh, um, make one last, last remark sorry David uh, so for this German Ukrainian digital partnership our idea is really to bring industry German industry uh, and Ukrainian innovative landscape together so sap is joining this initiative already take ukraine as a partner natalie thank you for for the last months for your input and uh, we are, yesterday you you had one session in, in in this framework so everybody who's interested to, to join this idea not just having single events but really to work on this more sustainable or, or long-term partnership just approach us we can discuss um, uh, activities and um, just as a last uh, block of advertisement uh, so thank you <laughs> Thank you so much. Great session. Yes, thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.